Hi, this is Pre-Algebra Lesson 1-7, Multiply Rational Numbers. In this lesson, we'll be able to multiply rational numbers. Let's start with solve and discuss it. Stella is making a, the United States flag. She has blue fabric, red fabric, and white fabric. Choose a length for the flag. What length of blue fabric would Stella need to make this flag? Explain your thinking. This blue, fl this blue part should be two-fifths of the length of the flag. So she has three types of fa fabric here. You're going to choose a length for the entire flag and figure out what length of the blue fabric would she make, she need to make this flag. So the length of the flag total is what you need to decide. You can do 20 or 15 or 30. You can, you can do any, you can choose anything. So say you're going to make hmm, 30, in, 30 uh, inches of the flag. Okay. So then two-fifths of the length of the flag would be 30 times two-fifths, right? Because you're going to divide 30 by 5 and then times that by 2 to get how much two-fifths of the length of the flag that is. So then 30 divided by 5 is 6 you're going to multiply 6 times 2 to get 12. So, now we know that Stella would need 12 inches of the blue fabric if the flag is 30 inches total. Stella would need 12 inches of the blue paper. Okay, so if you chose 20 as your flag, uh, the length of the flag, then 20 divided by 5 is 4 times 2 is 8, 8. So according to your flag's length, you should get uh, a different answer, but your answer should be exactly 2 fifths of the length of the flag. Okay, focus on math practices. The blue region of the flag is 7 over 13, the width, and, the, and 2 fifths the length of the flag. What part of the total area is the blue region of the flag? So let's try to understand this. The blue region here is 7 over 13, the width. So this is the width, right? So this is going to be 7 over 13 of the width, okay? And 2 fifths the length of the flag, which is the same as what's given. So what part of the total area is the blue region of the flag? So if we say the width If we say that the whole thing, the whole area is 1, what part, how much area would this be? In this case, you just have to multiply your width times length. So 7 over 13 times 2 over 5 would give you the part of the total area. So multiply 7 over 13 times 2 over 5. And you will get 14 over 65. So it's 14 over 65 of the total area. Okay, let's look at the next page. 
Think about how is multiplying rational numbers like multiplying integers. Example 1. Multiply a negative number by a positive rational number. Two hikers descend from the summit of the mountain. What is Petra's change in elevation? So Petra is here and Ben is here. Petra's change in elevation is 3.5 times as great as Ben's change in elevation. And we know that Ben's change in elevation is negative 1.2 meters. So if his change in elevation is 3 times as much, 3.5 times as much, then we need to multiply negative 1.2 times 3.5. So on the number line, you can go down 1, 2, 3 times and then half of a negative 1.2. So half of negative 1.2 is negative 0.6. So then this is just half. And you will end up here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative 4.2 meters. Okay? Or you can use numerical values. You can use the rules for multiplying to find his change in elevation. 3.5 times negative 1.2, positive times negative will be a negative. So 3.5 times 1.2. You need to count the decimal places, right? It's going to be 70 and then 35. And you add them up, and that's going to be 4 to 0. But you have two decimal places total, so you count 1, 2, and put a decimal place right here. This is the rule for multiplying decimals, if you didn't know. And you keep the negative sign from negative. So it's going to be negative 4.2, okay? Now it's your turn. Look, I try it. Megan's bank account is charged $9.95 per month for an online newspaper subscription. How could you represent the change in her account balance after three months of ch charges? Please fill in the blank and figure out the answer by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So, it's charged $9.95 per month, so she needs to pay that much money. So that is represented by a negative number. How could you represent the change in her account balance after three months of charges? So you multiply by three, and you should get a negative 29.85. So after three months, the change in our account balance is negative $29.85. So you have, a, in, in your number line, you have three groups of negative 9.95. And you end up with negative 29.85. Convince me, Megan's bank account is charged three times. Without calculating, how can you determine whether this is a negative or positive change to her account? Explain. So if you didn't know the amount, her, her bank account is charged three times. Charged itself means that your money is taken away from your bank. That means Without even calculating the amount, you know that it's going to be a negative change. So let's explain. Each time Megan's bank account is charged, the charge becomes greater. Any charge is a negative amount. Okay, let's go to the next example. Example two, multiply a positive number by a negative rational number. Find the product of negative five over six and two over five. So it's a positive and a 
it's a negative and a positive rational number. Again, the rules for multiplication apply here. Positive times a negative is a negative. Negative times a positive is a negative. And rational numbers, you would just multiply the numerators and the denominators and simplify if you can. So negative 10 over 30 will simplify to negative 1 over 3. So either way, if your negative is your negative sign is in the numerator or denominator, it doesn't matter. But you cannot make this negative sign uh, into 2. So you cannot say this is negative 5 over negative 6. Your negative sign has to go either side. But if you have any negative sign in the numerator or the denominator, that just makes your number negative. Okay? So in your number line from zero, you're gonna you're gonna say um, two over five is multiplied by five over six, and this is representing five over six, and five over six, five over six times negative negative five over six times two over five is negative 2 over 6, which will simplify to negative 1 over 3. Okay, example 3. Multiply a negative number by a negative rational number. Find the product of negative 0 0.3 and negative 11 over 30. So if you have a decimal times a fraction, what do you do? You can either change the decimal into a fraction or change fraction into a decimal. And if you have a negative times a negative, what is your product going to be? Since your sign is the same, you will always have a positive number. So negative uh, 0 0.3 could be rewritten as negative 3 over 10. Multiply the numerators and denominators, and you'll get 33 over 300. Or that could be simplified as 0 0.11 in decimal, or 11 over 100 in fraction. Okay, so now it's your turn. Please solve the trial question A, B, C, D by yourself and uh, find each product. Come back when you're ready for answers. Are you ready? Okay, let's check answers. Negative 5.3 times negative 2.6. Negative times a negative is a positive. And multiplying the decimals, you should get 13.78. If you don't know how to do this, please go back and review. Um, part B, negative 3 over 5 times 4 and 1 sixth. You can change the mixed number into a fraction. So negative 3 over 5. This will, let me type in some steps here. Negative 3 over 5 times 6 times 4, 24 plus 1 is 25 over 6. And you will get a negative number. Negative 75 over 30, which will be simplified into negative 5 over 2. Okay, part C. 0 0.2 times negative 1.75. Positive times a negative is a negative. So negative 0 0.2. 356 should be your answer. Part D, negative 2.5 times negative 7 over 10. You can change the decimal 2.5 into a fraction 25 over 10 or a simplified um, 5 over 2 and multiply them or you can change negative 7 over 10 into a decimal 0. 7, negative 0 0.7 and you could either get an answer as 1.75 or 1 and 3 fourth okay check your answers if you got all of them correct great job you got the lesson now all right let's uh, summarize our lesson so remember that the same rules for multiplying integers apply to multiplying all rational numbers. When multiplying two rational numbers, 
Remember that if the signs of the factors are the same, the product is positive. So positive times positive is positive. Negative times negative is also positive. The signs are different, positive times negative, negative times positive, the product is always negative. All right, that was lesson one dash seven, multiplying rational numbers. We'll continue with lesson eight, dividing integers in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.